Hi guys, let's continue our lesson regarding water. The fifth property of water is that water has a high surface tension. What is meant by surface tension? Surface tension refers to the measure of how difficult it is to break the surface of a liquid. This is the image of a water strider walking on water. Based on this image, can you make a guess whether is it difficult or is it easy to break the surface of water? Correct. It is difficult to break the surface of a water. Hence, we say that the surface tension of water is high. What makes water to have high surface tension? This is due to the cohesiveness between water molecules. Cohesiveness refers to the attraction between the same molecules. We know that water molecules can attract to each other via hydrogen bonding. Now, let's have a look at this picture again. As you can see, when a slight weight has been placed on the surface of the water, the surface of the water doesn't break. The surface of the water simply bends inwards. This is the molecular representation of what is happening on this image. As you can see, due to the cohesiveness between water molecules, or in other words, water molecules are connected to each other via hydrogen bonding, when a slight pressure is placed on the surface of the water, because of the hydrogen bonding between water molecules, the surface of the water does not break, it simply bends inwards. Another way of looking at the surface tension of water is by looking at the formation of water droplet as you slowly turning your water tap on. This is a drawing of water droplet from a tap. Now let's reflect on this normal daily occurrence. We know that if we turn the tap on very very slowly, water droplet will form. As you can see in this image, the surface of the water will hold and not break until the weight of the water is becoming too great, causing the surface to break here and water droplet to fall off. This is again due to the cohesiveness between water molecules. As you can see in this drawing, water molecules on the surface of the droplet are connected to each other via hydrogen bonding, thus contributing to the strength of the surface of water. If the connection between the same molecules are known as cohesiveness, the attraction between two different molecules are known as adhesiveness. We know that water molecules can form hydrogen bonding, hence can attract other molecules that are also polar or charged, like ions. Having high surface tension and its cohesiveness together with adhesiveness makes water able to travel up the xylem in plants. We know that some trees can be so tall, sometimes it makes us wonder, how can the water travel up so high from the ground to the top of the tree against gravity? This is how it works. Water molecules are able to form hydrogen bonding with the xylem wall. This is called adhesion. Due to adhesiveness of water molecule, this causes one water molecule to climb up the xylem wall. Because of one water molecule is connected to the next water molecule via hydrogen bonding, we know as cohesion, when one water molecule climb up the xylem wall, it will pull the next molecule up with it, thus enabling a continuous column of water to go up the xylem. Having high surface tension together with cohesiveness and adhesiveness also causing water to go up the narrow straw via capillary action. When you place a straw into your drinks, you could always observe that the water level within the straw is always slightly higher compared to the water level outside of the straw. The same concept apply. One water molecule will be attracted to the wall of the straw in interaction we call adhesion. And when one water molecule climb up the wall of the straw, it will pull up the next water molecule, causing the overall level of water within the straw to become higher compared to outside of the straw. Now, let's discuss the final property of water, which is 
water having a maximum density at 4 degrees Celsius. Before we discuss this property in detail, let's remind ourselves of the more important concepts that we have already learned in chemistry. For most elements in the periodic table and for most compound, solid is its densest form. As you can see here, in gaseous form, the molecules are moving so fast and are located so far apart from each other. As the temperature reduces, the molecules begin to lose energy and start to move slower and becoming closer and closer to each other. As the temperature drops further, the molecules will continue to lose energy. They will become so close to each other until they closely pack and become solid. Due to the arrangement of molecules that is closely packed in solid form, the substance will be at its densest form. This means if you put the solid version of a particular substance into the liquid version of that substance, the solid version will sink. But how about water? Water as it turns solid. We know that water turns solid or water becomes ice at zero degrees Celsius. As the temperature drops, water molecules move at a slower speed and begin to get closer to each other. At 4 degrees Celsius, the water molecules get so close to each other. This is as closest as they can get to each other. As the temperature drops further, from 4 degrees Celsius to 3 to 2 to 1 towards 0, water molecules loses more and more energy and start to move slower and slower and wanting to become closely packed together. But this is hindered by hydrogen bonds between water molecules. This bond will keep each water molecule at a regular distance, locking water molecules in a regular arrangement called crystal lattice. As you can see, this is liquid water. The hydrogen bond in liquid water constantly break and reform. This is because in liquid form, water molecules still have enough energy to move and interact with each other. As a water molecule slides away from one water molecule, it breaks hydrogen bond. But as the water molecule slides towards another water molecule, it will form hydrogen bond. That is why we said that in liquid form, hydrogen bond constantly break and reform. As the temperature drop and water turns from liquid to ice, water molecules will lose energy and becoming more and more static. Since water molecules becoming more static, it could form a more stable and longer lasting hydrogen bond with the next water molecule. They will space out and locked in this arrangement called crystal lattice. Since water molecules space out from each other as it turns solid, it prevents tight packing. So therefore, we can say that water expands when it solidifies and becomes less dense than liquid water. That is why when you place solid water or ice in liquid water, solid water floats. This is an evidence to show you that water expands when it solidifies. This is the picture of water before it solidifies and this is the picture of water after it has turned to ice. It expands. How can I be sure that the water has expanded? Look at the bottom of the bottle. While the water is still in liquid form, the bottom of the bottle holds its shape. But as the water freezes, you can see the bottom of the bottle has lost its shape and come out. This shows that water expands as it solidifies. So what are the importance of this property of water? Because water is not at its densest form when it turns solid, solid water could float in liquid water. Since ice float, the floating layer of ice in pond and lake in the winter will insulate the water below. Just as shown in this picture, due to being exposed to the cold temperature, the surface of the water turns to ice. 
Since ice floats, it will form a layer on top of the lake, thus insulating the water below from the weather, therefore protecting the water underneath here from turning into ice, thus allowing the aquatic ecosystem to exist in winter. Secondly, the floating ice will also provide habitat for organisms such as polar bear and seal.